In this video, we're going to be covering some basic anthropometric measurements that are useful in order to determine if somebody is at an elevated risk for obesity-related diseases like cardiovascular disease. Body mass index, or BMI, is basically just a height and weight um, ratio where you take, uh, actually it's weight first, so it's weight in kilograms divided by the height of the person in meters squared. So you're gonna do height times itself um, in meters. And when you do this, you're gonna get a single number that is in kilogram meters squared. These numbers here are all for adults. If you have a BMI of less than 18.5, you would be considered underweight as an adult. Um, the normal range is 18.5 to 24.9. Overweight then starts at 25 and goes up to 29.9. Obesity, um, class one, um, so basically obesity in general as well, starts at 30. Uh, obesity class one though goes from 30 to 34.9, class two, 35 to 39.9, and then class three would be 40 and above. Um, so these, uh, this is actually the most commonly uh, used method for establishing whether or not somebody has obesity. Um, and uh, there are some flaws to it, and we should uh, be aware of those. Uh, the, the big ones being if you have somebody who's heavily muscled, uh, think like an athlete who might um, carry a lot more muscle on their frame than the average individual, um, it's going to make them look like they're uh, on the higher end of this scale than what they truly should be um, based on how much body fat they have. Um, so they're more likely to end up in sort of the overweight category um, when they really should you know, be considered more normal weight. Um, the other end of the spectrum where there's also some issues is people who uh, lack having much muscle mass, but they do have a fair amount of fat mass. So if somebody is under muscled, um, but maybe over uh, fat in, uh, or they have too much fat, they are going to look as though they're normal weight because they have weight on them. That weight just happens to be body fat, um, not muscle. Uh, and even though they have too much body fat, um, because they have a small amount of muscle mass, and they end up looking like their normal weight. So those are the sort of two extreme ends of the spectrum. The first one being the, the probably the more common issue um, with young people. The second one being something that you're probably more likely going to see um, as you start getting into the elderly population where uh, muscle mass is wasted a little bit, um, but fat mass has sort of been maintained or even increased. Even though body mass index has these, these issues I just mentioned, it's still a really good measurement for most people, especially sedentary people. Most people, this the body mass index is going to categorize them uh, relatively accurately. Um, so it's something that kind of gets bashed a lot within the exercise profession, um, uh, mostly because a lot of people who exercise do tend to have more muscle mass, but outside of that, uh, that group of uh, heavily muscled individuals in the exercise, exercise profession, it, it's a, quite a good measurement and it's not something that should be overlooked. All right, so let's get to another uh, common anthropometric measurement. And that is uh, circumference measurements. Uh, specifically, uh, we're gonna talk about waist circumference and then the waist hip ratio, which means you have to measure the, the hip cir circumference as well. Um, the uh, either one of these is going to use uh, a type of flexible tape. Often it's going to be a gullet tape measure where you have this spring-loaded cylinder that tells you if you're sort of pulling it um, at the right level of tension because if you pull too hard, you make the person look uh, smaller than they are. Where if you're not pulling hard enough, you make them look maybe a little bigger than they are. You might get a little extra slack in the flexible tape measure. Um, but anyway, so... The waist measurement, uh, which is done on the abdomen most commonly, is going to be uh, considered uh, elevated and means that the person's at an elevated risk of having cardiovascular disease at some point in the future. Uh, for men, uh, equal to or greater than 102 centimeters or 40 inches would put them in this sort of elevated risk category. For women, equal to or greater than 88 centimeters or 35 inches would also put them in the elevated cardiovascular disease risk category. Um, 
we're highlighting the waste. It's probably the most commonly used uh, site, but there are various other sites like the HIP um, that, are, that can be done and are oftentimes done. Um, if you're gonna measure the waste and the HIP, uh, it's, it's quite common to do a waste HIP ratio. Uh, so just divide the waste value by the HIP value and doing that gives you um, another chance to sort of check for uh, uh, elevation in cardiovascular disease risk. Uh, so if you are working with a relatively young individual, and this uh, young's kind of a liberal term here, because um, you know old basically starts around 60 years old. So anybody under 60 would be um, most likely use these uh, cut points here. So equal to or greater than 0.95 um, for men would be considered at the elevated risk for cardiovascular disease for men uh, for women equal to or greater than 0 0.86. Again, we're talking about the ratio of waist to hip. Um, if you're talking older adults, so um, this is specifically 60 to 69 years old, um, you'd probably use this also um, slightly above that as well, um, but equal to or greater than 1.03 for men, equal to or greater than 0 0.9 for women would give you that elevated cardiovascular disease risk. And the reason why this waist hip ratio is a fairly uh, important one to measure if, if you're able and you're looking for some sort of obesity uh, anthropometric measurements is the waist, as I already mentioned, is done on the abdomen, typically on the narrowest part of the abdomen, where the hip is typically done on the widest part of the, of the buttocks, so the butt. And um, that ratio of narrowest to biggest part of the body is going to give you, um, and it also happens to be the two places where people carry um, the most uh, body fat, it's going to give you an idea of where they're carrying body fat and specifically do they have what we call android obesity. Um, so let's go ahead and talk more about android obesity and its counterpart, uh, which is gynoid obesity. So android obesity is the apple shape that a lot of uh, obese men tend to get. Um, women get it as well, but it's more common with men. Um, and this means they are storing more of their um, body fat in their trunk and their abdomen. And this leads to a greater risk of um, cardiovascular disease and other obesity related diseases than gynoid obesity, which means you're carrying the weight more in your hips, which is the, the more common obesity um, sort of phenotype for women. Uh, the reason why android obesity is more dangerous is it puts the fat in and around the major organs of the body that are uh, largely in the abdomen. And so if the organs are constantly surrounded by fat and uh, the fat sort of infiltrates into them, it can uh, have a greater likelihood of causing some issues in those organs as well as you know, then health issues because of that. Um, so again, uh, Android obesity is sort of the apple-shaped, most of the, the you know, sort of barrel-shaped uh, chest and abdomen that uh, are, is more common with men. Gynoid obesity is more the pear shape with more of the hips, uh, but in sort of lower waist um, that is uh, most often the obesity phenotype that women get. Um, and it's, again, less risky in terms of uh, the risk for um, cardiovascular disease in the future. I will put a link below this video uh, to uh, a video I've already done on how to measure waist and hip circumference and uh, so you can do that waist hip ratio. I'll also put a link below this video on how to uh, measure the height of a person, how to measure their weight so that you can do the body mass index. And I will put a link in the description below this video uh, to a video I'm about to release after this video doing, um, uh, we're talking about some uh, body composition measurements. So this was all uh, some of the most common uh, anthropometric measurements, which just means measuring sort of size and shape of the body, where um, if you can, you really want to measure body composition. So how much body fat percentage does the person have? Because it's, it's going to give you a little more detailed information.